In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a custom two-part knowledge check that contains more than one question. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means subscribe to my channel, like this video, and feel free to share it with all of your e-learning friends. My client recently sent me a storyboard that contained sort of a two-part knowledge check question and they didn't bother to check with me if it was something I could fulfill for them but I went ahead and did it anyway. I came up with this custom solution that I'm going to share with all of you. If you happen to be a member of my YouTube channel, you will also have the opportunity as an all-in-one member to download the project file for this particular project. Let's get started. Okay, before I get into how to build this, let's just cover a couple of things. Absolutely, you could do this with a true-false slide and a multiple choice slide and have the first part of the two-part knowledge check on the true-false and then have it automatically jump to the next slide once they successfully complete it. But invariably what happens in e-learning instructional design is the stakeholder will say, well, you know, it'd be really nice if it was all on one slide. Wouldn't that be great? So here's how you do that. <laughs> So what I have on my slide is I have a paragraph block, which I added from the add text blocks icon here. I also have a radio block with just a yes or no option, which I added from the add interactive components icon. And then I added uh, two more paragraph blocks, but this time with a card around them so that we could have them seem kind of like a pop out with the feedback for what's selected over here. Next is another radio block. Again, we add that from the interactive components icon here. And then followed by two more paragraph blocks. This one with the final correct answer we're giving them a continue button so that they can go to the next slide when they successfully complete this interaction. And incorrect, in this case, it's gonna be more of a try again message because I want them to find the right answer before they move forward here. This one here, I'm not gonna force them to find the right answer because yes or no, you're gonna get incorrect or correct and you'll know obviously that they're, one is wrong and one is right and then you'll be able to move forward. No sense making someone select the other answer when they know clearly that is the other answer here. So the other thing with all of this too is that starting with this block all the way down to the last block, I've set them to be not shown during publish. So they are not visible and you can test that out just by previewing it before you even added any interactions here. We can see we're just gonna see this message, the question, the example text, and either yes or no, right? So from there we, we can start to build our interaction. Now you could add submit buttons, but quite frankly, that just adds a layer of complexity. Let's just have them choose the answer. Now with any selection, we don't need to do anything here. I will use this in the second half of my two-part knowledge check because I'm gonna clear out the previous message. But in this case here, I don't need anything under any selection. We're just gonna go with selection of and if they say yes, which in this case is incorrect, we're going to show the incorrect message. And to do that, we want to show the content sections. So let's just roll our mouse down until we see the incorrect message. Not this version. We want to show this version with the entire block. So I'm going to select that. And we're right away going to give them the next block, the next question, and we can do that and select that as well. So whether they get the first part right or wrong, we're gonna move forward and show them the next part of that message there. So that's good, we'll press next. I'm gonna reset state on slide revisit and click done. And we'll do something similar for no. We're going to show 
Again, go to content sections, and we're gonna show the correct message and its block, this one here. You can label these if you think that that might help you select better, but I'm pretty confident in that that's the correct one to select. I'm gonna press next, reset state on slide revisit, and done. So that really takes care of the first part. But there is one more thing I want to do. With any selection, we can use it here or we can add it to the actions of the individual selections here. But under any selection, I want to disable this yes, no block here, this radio button block, because I don't want them to make another choice. And there's no reason to. So we'll click on more. We will scroll up to disable. And again, we're going to look for this item here, the radio button item there. Scroll down, press next, and then done. Now my advice is when you're building an interaction with multiple steps or multiple stages, now's a great time to preview this and see if it works so far the way you want it to, right? So let's preview that. Okay, so let's choose yes. That's incorrect. Can I change my answer? No, I cannot. But now I can move on to the second part of the question. Let's reset this and see what happens when I choose no. Correct. And I didn't set up the display of the other item there. So let's go there. Show paragraph, but I also want to show radio block number two. So I don't know why I missed that, but we can easily add to that here by editing the original target here. And we'll just find this item and add it to the selection that we're making here, okay? That's right, I did it in content section, so I'm gonna show the feedback and show the radio block. So next and done. Let's just check that. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work this time. Press play, let's choose no, correct, Look at the following version, and now I need to find an example of the properly written version of this sentence here. So, similar to before, this is going to be slightly different here. When I select anything from this list, that's what this first section is for. So, I'm going to hide content section, and we're looking for the incorrect please make another selection option here. We'll choose that. But we're not going to disable this because we want to give them multiple tries. So that's going to happen. And we'll just reset state on slide revisit there. So we will hide the incorrect feedback. And we'll now go to selection of. Now in this example here, the correct version of the sentence is the third one. So I'm gonna do that one first, just so I can keep it straight in my head. I'm gonna select that. And when I select the right answer, I wanna show correct and then disable this. So let's show our content section with correct. This is it here. Next and done. And we will also disable our radio button block so no further changes can be made. Next and done, okay? Probably not a big deal. One of the things I like to do when I have multiple actions is I will select them all and then merge them together so that they happen simultaneously. This is more of an issue when you have like seven, eight, nine actions, and you don't want to see a delay between all those actions, for two actions, it's probably not going to be noticeable. But just as a best practice, I tend to do this here. So for each of the other ones, all I want to do is show the incorrect message. And that's it, right? So let's choose that. We'll show our content section, and we will show our incorrect message. And do the same thing for this one here show our content section next done and last but not least the third distractor we will show our content section for that next and done all right let's try this out so this is our two-part knowledge check we'll just do preview 
Two-part knowledge check. So question, is the following sentence grammatically correct? Blah, 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 blah. Let's say ye no would be the correct answer. Okay, now what we want you to do is look at the following versions of the sentence and select what would be most grammatically correct. The most grammatical, you know. So let's try this one here. Now I'm forced to scroll down. It says incorrect. Make another selection. Okay, let's try this one here. Oh, there we go. Correct. You have selected the most grammatically correct version of this sentence. And I could now press continue. And of course, if I program my continue button to go to the next slide, I get to continue on with the rest of the course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.